Hi, everyone. My name is Al Rochelle. We are continuing our conversations and glad you could join us via the web about things that are going on with the autoimmunity and autonomic failure. Joining me right now is Dr. Stephen Vernino, who is the president of the AAS, the American Autonomic Society. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. Now that you're an elected official, so much more expected of you, correct? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so give me a little bit of your background and, and working with dysautonomia and those other kind of disorders. Sure. So um, I'm a neurologist uh, by training and uh, initially trained in neuromuscular disorders. At the time I was going through training, there wasn't uh, really a specialty such as autonomic disorders or, or autoimmunity in neurology. And so that's been a really major development over the last 20, 25 years that we now understand that there are autoimmune diseases that can affect the nerves and uh, as well as the importance of the autonomic nervous system in, in our, our functioning and management of all the automatic functions of our body. So I got gradually interested in those over the years, initially in, in autoimmunity and how antibodies can influence uh, the, the body, um, influence the nervous system, and, and more recently how antibodies and autoimmunity can influence the autonomic nervous system. So I'm now in Dallas, Texas, and um, we have a, an autonomic laboratory. We see patients and try to sort out a, what sort of autonomic problem they have, and, and, and B, whether we can understand what the cause is, and in some cases that may be autoimmunity. So what did people do prior to us having the knowledge of what might be going on with our bodies? Um, well, we you know, treated symptoms uh, in many cases, and mm -hmm. uh, many patients went sort of undiagnosed, and, and in some cases you know, had, had very poor quality of life, and uh, were uh, diagnostic dilemmas, and um, you know, obviously this is, there's been lots of changes in lots of areas, in genetics, and um, in new medications and MRI scans and so on. So we can better diagnose things now than certainly we could 20 or 30 years ago. And, and auto, uh, in the autonomic nervous system, that's been true as well. Right, and now trying to educate more doctors, more physicians, more nurse practitioners, all of those about what to look for to possibly make a diagnosis that might fit under this uh, dysautonomia syndrome. Correct, yeah. Um, and so a lot. Of, the problem is a lot of uh, medical schools and... Uh, uh, training programs for doctors don't spend much, if any, attention on the autonomic nervous system. And so uh, really the, the purpose of, of this series of, of videos and, and for the American Autonomic Society is to provide education about what does the autonomic nervous system do, what are the symptoms when it's not working properly, and what sort of diseases, what sort of treatments are, are available for patients. Okay, see, so why, why don't medical schools pay attention to it? Why didn't they? Uh, I think it's that it's uh, it's a field that falls between the specialties. Um, so we, as neurologists, have taken on autonomic nervous system because it's part of the nervous system. Sure. Uh, there are cardiologists who are interested in the autonomic nervous system because of the effects of blood pressure and heart rate. Um, but it crosses over all those things. Gastroenterologists um, are run into issues with the autonomic nervous system. So in some ways, it, it affects all specialties. But uh, for that ver same reason. Often, none of the specialties are specifically tasked to uh, be responsible for the autonomic. And because it involves this holistic universe, sometimes is the way it's been described, yeah. you almost don't even know, well, where do I start? Because doctors often start with checklists and go down the checklist, not that, not that, not that, not that. Yeah, it can be very daunting, you know, particularly when uh, our time with a patient is, is limited uh, in the office. And, and they, particularly with autonomic nervous system disorders, they, as you said, have a checklist of so many symptoms and so many systems involved that it can be overwhelming at times, and there's a tendency for doctors to pull back and just focus on what they know rather than look at the big picture. Well, or what they think they can fix, because isn't that what patients almost demand? What's wrong with me, now fix me. They want to feel better, that's right. Yeah, so let's define a couple of things. Autoimmunity, just define that for me so we know what it is. So uh, we have, all have an immune system, and it's important for, for fighting off infection and, and uh, uh, fighting off cancer in our body and other important uh, functions. But in some cases, the immune system goes uh, haywire gets mixed up mm -hmm. and starts to attack uh, the, our, our own body, and that's what we call autoimmunity or immunity against ourself. Um, and there are a lot of well-recognized autoimmune disorders, um, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, and so on. And, and uh, we're increasingly recognized there's a lot of autoimmune disorders of the nervous system, multiple sclerosis and myasthenia and other things like that. It's important to recognize because this is uh, uh, our own body that's sort of uh, out to get us, if you will, and <laughs> and there are ways to. Uh, understand that that's going on and, and potentially to treat it. We now have medications that can turn down the, the immune system uh, in some cases and, and can be effective treatment for autoimmune disorders. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when you talk about autonomic failure versus autonomic dysfunction, sometimes I'm reading some of the literature that yeah. that, that becomes a real issue. Yeah, so there's lots of ways that the autonomic nervous system can 
misbehave. Um, and uh, probably the simplest way to under the simplest uh, scenario is autonomic failure, where the autonomic nervous system just doesn't work. Yeah. And so when we stand up, instead of the autonomic nervous system regulating our blood pressure, the blood pressure falls, people feel faint, they pass out. Uh, or with respect to the gastro, to the GI symptoms, that if the autonomic nervous system doesn't work, the, the guts don't move. Uh, you know, food doesn't move along, the stomach doesn't empty, and there's severe constipation. Um, if the sweating glands don't work, we can't sweat, we get overheated easily. Mm -hmm. So when the, when the autonomic nervous system fails, there's a lot of bad symptoms that occur. But there's another group of patients that's probably more common uh, that we sometimes call dysautonomia, where instead of the autonomic nervous system just being sort of broken and not working, uh, some of the autonomic reflexes are are not working properly. So, oh, okay. uh, you know, a good example would be postural tachycardia syndrome, where uh, when when one stands up, instead of the blood pressure, heart rate, you know, sort of being regulated and staying staying put, the the heart rate gets very high, and people feel feel bad for that. So it's not that the autonomic nervous system doesn't work. In some conditions, it may be working overactive. Let's talk, here's, here's another term that I want to. It's how common is something called AAG, which is autoimmune autonomic ganglionopathy. What is that? Yeah. So that's a very specific autoimmune disorder of the autonomic nervous system, and uh, I, it's a disease I've studied for 20 years or more. Okay. Um, and what goes on in AAG is that the, the body, as part of this autoimmune condition, makes an antibody, and, and antibodies are, are, are good or when they're fighting off uh, viruses and so on, but if the body makes an antibody against one of our own body proteins, in this case a receptor that's very important in the autonomic nervous system, that can cause autonomic failure because the antibody prevents signals from getting from the brain and the spinal cord out to the blood vessels and heart and so on. So yeah. it's, a, it's a condition where uh, there's autonomic failure because the autonomic reflexes don't work. And it's autoimmune because it's caused by an antibody. Um, so over the course of time, we've been able to develop a, a, a reliable antibody test that's now commercially available. So in cases where people are suspected of having uh, autoimmune autonomic ganglionopathy. We can talk about the symptoms of that in a minute. Yeah. Um, there's now confirmatory tests one can do uh, at the laboratory to, to help make the diagnosis. Now let's move in. What are the symptoms of yeah. it? Yeah. So like, like autonomic failure, as I was mentioning before, uh, one of the major symptoms is what we call orthostatic hypotension. So okay. when someone stands up, their blood pressure drops. And it, and it can be quite precipitous. So we've had people who drop their blood pressure from a normal level uh, down to a systolic blood pressure in the 60s, which is oh. not enough to keep the blood flow into the brain. Yeah, yeah. And so those people either have to sit down or lie down or they're going to pass out. Mm -hmm. um, but in fact, the, this condition affects all the other autonomic functions. So another major symptom is gastrointestinal problems. These patients have really profound, severe constipation. They may go yeah. days and days without having a bowel movement or bladder retention. They can't empty their bladder. Uh, they can't sweat. Uh, their mouth is dry and they're eyes may be dry because they're not making tears and yeah. saliva appropriately. And even in some severe cases, even uh, uh, some of the core autonomic reflexes like your pupils constricting to light, even that doesn't work right. So um, th those, those constellation of all those symptoms together, particularly severe orthostatic hypotension and severe constipation, especially if it's come on rather suddenly, um, should make one think about AAG as a diagnosis. Talking about these antibodies that are circulating in the body. Now, I know that I, I'm, I'm being very over simplistic about it. Why can't you just remove those? Well, you can. Uh, so there's a, there's a treatment that we sometimes use uh, called plasma exchange therapy. Uh -huh. And I should point out, first of all, that AAG is a very rare disease. And okay, so rare. none of the things I'm talking about are studied in big uh, multicenter double blind trials. So we, this is all based on experience. Yeah. Um, so plasma exchange is a treatment fairly simple. The, you use a, a big IV and you take the blood out and basically use a machine to wash out the antibodies and then you give the patient's blood back. Um, wow. So a, a plasmapheresis or plasma exchange. And so that actually works pretty well for these antibody disorders. The problem is that you remove the antibodies but you haven't removed the, the white blood cells that are making the antibodies. And so oh. within, within a few weeks those antibodies come back and yeah. you're right back where you started. So uh, typically the treatment has to consist of something like plasma exchange to treat the antibodies along with another immune sort of treatment that's going to reduce the production of antibodies or turn down the immune system. Yeah, uh, so we're trying to educate people right now. So if there are physicians that are watching this right now, uh, based on autoimmunity and, and autonomic failure, what do you want them to know? One thing to walk away from this. Yeah, so uh, main thing is that uh, you know patients will present with very disabling symptoms and it's important to think about the autonomic nervous system. Uh, and probably the most important thing people can do, whether it's in the ER or the primary care clinic, is actually measure 
uh, blood pressures laying down and standing up, along with heart rate, right, which yeah. gives us a lot of information about whether you're dealing with autonomic failure with orthostatic hypotension or one of these dysautonomia yeah, conditions. Yeah. So that test alone, which is anybody can do, right. will give you a lot of information. The other point is that uh, the autoimmune autonomic ganglionopathy is very rare. Uh, but uh, even though there's a lab test available for it, so uh, you need to think about other diseases as well. And uh, increasingly, we're recognizing that autoimmunity is important in a lot of other conditions, mm -hmm. including probably other other autonomic conditions as well. Doctor, thank you so much, and thank good you. luck again as your I president, as a term of the president of the AAS. Yep, great.